Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Roshan Muttarajge from uh, Clarkson University. I'm a PhD candidate. So uh, today, uh, uh, the title of my presentation is uh, Non-Traditional Aluminosilicate-Based Alkyl-Activated Motors, uh, Statistical Optimization of uh, Solution Parameters and Processing Conditions for Optimal Strength and Setting Time. Okay, uh, let's uh, first start with a, a little background. Uh, so far, we all know that OPC is uh, responsible for uh, uh, around 8% of uh, CO2 emissions. So, uh, researchers have mainly worked uh, in this field uh, to make uh, to introduce new uh, sustainable uh, remedies for this. So, uh, one of the main uh, uh, concern is uh, on uh, supplementary cementitious materials. Uh, uh, people have used supplementary cementitious materials as partial replacements in uh, OPC systems, uh, as well as uh, uh, the concept of alkali activated concrete, uh, a concrete with zero OPC, is also uh, imaged as a sustainable alternative. Okay, uh, let's see what is uh, this uh, alkali activated concrete means. Uh, alkali activation is a heterogeneous chemical reaction uh, between uh, two groups of uh, materials. Uh, the first, uh, it has two reactants. The first reactant is uh, we usually call the precursor or the binder. Uh, as the precursor or the binder, we are using uh, a solid aluminosilicate based material. Uh, generally, we use uh, uh, fly ash and slag as the precursors. Uh, then uh, this binder is uh, reacted with an alkali activator. Generally, we use uh, sodium silicate uh, or sodium hydroxide solution. Uh, this alkali activator has two solution parameters. Uh, the, the first one is silica modulus. Uh, this is the mass ratio between the uh, silicon dioxide and the sodium oxide contained in the solution. Uh, this mainly uh, gives an idea about the silicate concentration of the uh, solution. Uh, the second uh, parameter is sodium oxide content. Uh, uh, it is the sodium oxide content uh, uh, as a percentage for the binder. Uh, this uh, gives an idea of the sodium hydroxide concentration of the uh, activator. So these two materials, uh, these two reactants are reacted uh, following uh, specific curing regime. Uh, usually, uh, researchers have used uh, heat curing, ambient curing, and steam curing for this as the uh, curing regime. So after this uh, alkyl activation process, what we get is uh, we name the product as alkyl activated material, geopolymer, or inorganic polymer. It mainly consists of two major chemical compounds, uh, calcium aluminosilicate hydrate. Uh, we short need to cash, then uh, sodium aluminum silicate, uh, silicate hydrate, we know it, uh, name it as NASH. Or, uh, there can be a combination of uh, both these products. Okay. Uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, fly ash and slag have been used uh, uh, mostly uh, in alkyl activation, but uh, recent studies shows that uh, Fly ash and uh, slag production are declining uh, due to the closure of thermal power plants and due to the increase in the recy recycling process of uh, steel. So, a 50% decline in uh, fly ash uh, production is uh, recorded last decade. And uh, we need to uh, investigate on new materials uh, uh, as uh, binders for, uh, for alkali activation. Uh, alkali alkali activation. So, uh, for this, uh, we have uh, data that uh, calcium clays can uh, prove to be more available in future. Okay, uh, based on these, uh, based on that background, uh, we uh, investigated on uh, several materials and selected four groups of materials, uh, which are currently underutilized as construction material. Uh, the first uh, group here is. Uh, I named it as uh, ground bottom mesh GBA. Uh, there are three types of ground bottom meshes I have select we have selected. 
having different contents of calcium oxide in it. And uh, these are produced as a residue in uh, core combustion. Uh, the second group, calcium clays. Uh, uh, here also we selected three types of calcite based clays, uh, which are calcined around 750 degrees Celsius and uh, are ground into acquire reactive form of clay. The third group is natural, uh, natural porcelains, so also you can call them as volcanic ashes. There are three types of uh, uh, volcanic ashes uh, we selected based on their different sources. And uh, finally, uh, uh, the final group uh, is a uh, fluidized bed combustion ash. Uh, there are two types of uh, fly ashes we selected uh, based on the anthracite coal and bituminous coal uh, sources. Okay, uh, after selecting the materials, our next objective was to uh, optimize the, uh, the compressive strength and the workability the most uh, say, sought after uh, uh, properties uh, of, a, of a concrete. So for this, uh, we used a, a statistical method called central composite design. Uh, it has two factors uh, that I, I have selected uh, as shown in the graph. Uh, the two factors I'm going to optimize are the solution parameters, silica modulus, uh, named as MS, and then the uh, sodium oxide content. Uh, so each uh, solution uh, parameter or the factor has uh, five levels. Uh, so I have changed the levels from 0.5 to 1.5, uh, and the sodium oxide content I have changed from 7 to 10 percent. So based on each uh, of those levels, I have obtained uh, 12 runs per each uh, material. So uh, then I uh, uh, prepared uh, two by two by two cubes, uh, motor cubes, and then followed two curing uh, regimes, heat curing and ambient curing, in order to get uh, the compressive strength and the flow of the mixture. Uh, this is, these are the results of the optimization. Uh, I uh, did the optimization for at least one material uh, selecting from each group. Uh, here I have present, uh, presented the contour as a contour plot, uh, how the compressive strength and the flow changes uh, based on the uh, two solution parameters. Uh, the material presented here is the calcine clay too. So here uh, we obtained uh, we could obtain uh, around 6,000 psi strength uh, at uh, 28 days uh, uh, ambient cure, then uh, and also around uh, 6,000 psi uh, after heat curing at uh, seven days. The flow values were almost uh, greater than uh, 50 percent, uh, which is a desir desirable value. So by studying this uh, contour plot, we found that in order to get the higher strength, we have to increase the uh, two solution parameters. And in order to get a higher flow, we have to decrease the uh, solution parameters. So uh, this table uh, uh, summarizes uh, at least two uh, optimum mix uh, mixture, uh, mixtures with uh, good strength from each uh, material. So I have presented uh, the solution to binder ratio, uh, the two solution parameters, and the binder composition here. Uh, if you see uh, the first group, uh, that's calcine clay group. Uh, in order to gain, uh, improve the strength, uh, we uh, replaced uh, uh, the binder part with 10% uh, calcium hydroxide. Uh, we found that the addition of calcium hydroxide increased the strength of our materials. Uh, the second group is a bottom mesh group. Uh, uh, it uh, gave us good strength even without adding uh, calcium hydroxide. Uh, the uh, third and the fourth groups were a bit challenging. Uh, they were not giving us a, a good strength uh, by themselves alone. Uh, so we uh, replaced 30% of the binder content with uh, a type of a, a clay that we chose. Uh, Yes, CC1, and also added some uh, calcium hydroxide content in it uh, to get a ternary blend uh, as, a, as the final uh, binder. Uh, we did that for the uh, both NPs and FBCs. Okay. Uh, 
this uh, plot summarizes all the uh, strength values at uh, 28 days. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, from uh, 3, 7, and all the uh, 3, 7, 28 day strengths uh, of uh, uh, all the materials uh, with optimum strength. Uh, the solid lines represents the ambient cured uh, strength and, and the uh, heat. Solid line represents the heat cured strength, and the dotted line uh, represents the ambient cured strength. Uh, if you see the uh, calcine clay group, uh, we, pr uh, we produced uh, the highest high strength. Uh, the calcine clay group produced the highest strength, around 6,000 psi. Uh, and the ambient cured and the heat cured strengths at 28 days were uh, almost same, and all the materials gave us. Uh, uh, gave us at least uh, 3000 psi strength. Uh, then uh, we use the same data uh, to develop uh, multiple linear regression models. Uh, here for the uh, linear regression model I have used uh, 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 this equation here. Uh, I have used the input variables, uh, the two solution parameters. Apart from that, I use the curing temperature and the curing edge. So, by using uh, these two, uh, these four input uh, parameter uh, variables, uh, I'm going to predict the strength of my material. Uh, if you see the uh, the uh, coefficients, uh, the so two solution parameters have the higher positive coefficients in all the materials, uh, and the probability value for most of the variables. Uh, in each model is almost zero, and all the variance inflation factors we uh, we also name call them as VIF values were closer to unity. Uh, that tells us there is a very minimum multicollinearity between the input variables. Uh, the most important thing R squared value. Uh, uh, most uh, all the models gave us R squared value for more than seventy percent, uh, with the maximum. 84% in the GB, GBA3 model and the F statistics uh, of all the models were high enough that their probability values are uh, less than 0 0.001 uh, which tells us these models gives uh, the best uh, fit for our data. Okay, uh, the next uh, important uh, property is the time of setting uh, of the uh, mixtures. Uh, uh, the demand for setting time depends on its application. Uh, we use the general method uh, Weichert needle uh, setting time apparatus to measure the setting time. Uh, these are the results of the setting time. Uh, the uh, first graph shows the setting times of all the uh, all the mixtures with which gives us the optimum strength. As you see, the calcine clays were setting fast, uh, if they have the least uh, time of setting, the bottom, all the bottom measures uh, have the highest time of setting even more than one day. Uh, the NPs and the FPC1 had moderate uh, uh, time, of, uh, time of setting and the FPC2 was uh, also uh, setting fast. So we used uh, existing commercial retarders uh, to control the uh, setting time, uh, but all the methods were unsuccessful. So finally, we found that uh, the calcium hydroxide we are adding to the system plays a major part. So we have to adjust the calcium hydroxide we are adding to the system. So uh, after adjusting the uh, calcium hydroxide, uh, we measured the setting times and we obtained the graphs like this. Uh, we reduced the uh, calcium hydroxide we are adding to the calcine clays. Uh, so that we could get a, desir uh, a desirable setting time. And in order to uh, reduce the setting time of uh, uh, round bottom mesh, uh, we added a little amount of calcium hydroxide. And for the NPs, we uh, maintain it same. And for the FBC2 also, we adjust the calcium hydroxide content. Uh, this table summarizes all the calcium hydroxide adjustments I've done. As you can see in the calcine clay group, I have reduced the calcium hydroxide level from 10% to those levels. 
and for the water mesh group, uh, I have added some amount of uh, calcium hydroxide. And for the NPs, I have maintained it same, uh, it's unchanged. And for the FBC1 also, it's uh, maintained same. And for FBC2, it, uh, even uh, I uh, even I even I didn't add uh, calcium hydroxide uh, to its binder part. It, uh, it was setting very fast. Uh, so we found that uh, adding uh, some amount of uh, shrinkage reducing admixture controls uh, its setting. So we added 9% uh, of SRA for the uh, uh, that material. And the next question we get is uh, by adjusting these. Uh, calcium hydroxide content, uh, do, whether we change our final strength values. So we did uh, test the 28-day uh, ambient cured strength again uh, for these adjusted uh, mixtures and we found that there is a minimum reduction in the uh, strength and uh, almost it gave, all the mixtures gave around uh, almost uh, uh, strength uh, higher than 4000 psi. Okay, with that, uh, I have come to the end of this presentation. So, as the conclusions, uh, the compressive strength of uh, all the materials, uh, uh, all the alkali activated motors, range uh, range from 4000 to 6000 psi. The workability of the most of the uh, mixtures were more than uh, 50 uh, percentage. Then, the statistical models were accurate and reliable with minimum flows. Uh, calcium hydroxide can be used as a set controlling admixture uh, and shrinkage reducing uh, admixture uh, can act as a set retarder uh, for our uh, geopolymer materials. Uh, finally, I would like to thank uh, our collaborators, Penn State University and Purdue University, uh, funding uh, uh, agency uh, FWHA and my uh, university, Clarkson University. Thank you.